wrote the introduction to the book, um, I tried to boil down you know, this question, why, why should we conserve uh, names, down to sort of the three R's. We think about the three R's in education. And uh, the first of them is resilience. Um, these names did not disappear, um, despite the fact that uh, I think it has become an endangered language. I estimate that we were probably able to document maybe 60% 60, 60 uh, of the place names that originally existed. Uh, that's a cautious estimate, but I, I think it's, it's quite probable. Um, and obviously, people not only remember the name, but they had strong associations, emotional associations, spiritual associations, and uh, information uh, about those names. So they are tremendously resilient. Secondly, there was resonance. Um, nothing happens in your life without a place. Every experience you have is in place. And uh, that's why place is such a powerful tool for learning, for education. Because everything that becomes seared in our memory uh, has a placial context. And so I think it's, it's the most underutilized resource in education. And that's why it's so inspiring to see uh, a project like this take off and to have school children in particular uh, involved. Uh, certainly when I did my science curriculum in school, we, we learned a lot of our science out of textbooks. And then, but what I really remember is what I discovered myself outside in, in a place uh, when, uh, when I got to experience it in the full, with my full five senses. Um, and then finally, the last one is respect. Uh, I think these names are genuine artifacts on the land. They're not material artifacts, they're linguistic artifacts. And just like we, we respect archaeological artifacts, we should respect these linguistic artifacts that were placed by people on the land uh, throughout history. And uh, to respect them, we not only have to make them visible, um, but we have to take care of the names and we have to take care of the places. Um, otherwise, we risk becoming disoriented again. There's always one that captures my fancy that I never really focused on before. So I just took a quick glance through the name and I came across this one, which I now remember. Hitchkunduatayiye, um, which means a uh, place where the frogs drifted in bunches. <laughs> and it's uh, one of these wonderfully descriptive names, uh, a place around uh, Katsuhin River, I think. I guess if, if I were to put a name on this, I might say something like Yetki Kandu Ye, and say, may children drift towards this table in bunches. <laughs> because <laughs> frogs we know are associated with wealth, I think, in Tlingit culture, and also with transformation. And if you are introduced to Clinket place names, I think you're introduced to a real wealth, uh, and also it can be transformed. It was for me. And this award is called the La Scana of the Year Award, and it recognizes works that make a significant contribution to the understanding of Alaska and exhibits originality, depth of research, and knowledge of Alaska. And it was it was tough, but not too tough, with with Tom Thornton's wonderful book that he had published. And um, I would like to present this award to you, Tom, if you would please come up on behalf of the Alaska Library Association as president at that conference, but now considered the past president. Here's the award, the Alaska the Alaskano Award to Thomas E. Thornton for the, our grandparents' names on the land. And I'm sorry, I cannot say it in Chinkin. <laughs> Here you go, Tom. <laughs>